Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the geometric distribution. Suppose we have a probability experiment that only has two outcomes, success and failure, like maybe flipping a coin. The geometric distribution models the number of trials needed to obtain a single success. Suppose P is the probability of success, Q is the probability of failure, and X is the total number of attempts needed. Then X is a discrete random variable, and its probability mass function is Q to the X minus 1 times P, where X can be 1, 2, 3, and so on. This is really just the multiplication rule. In order for the outcome to be X, we need to have X minus 1 failures and 1 success in that order. So the probability is Q times Q times Q, X minus 1 times, times P. Notice, by the way, here that the probability of success is the same on every trial. These are really Bernoulli trials. One important warning. The geometric distribution is often also modeled with this PMF, Q to the X times P, where X can be 0, 1, 2, and so on. Here, X is the number of failures before the first success, rather than the total number of attempts. Obviously, these two representations are completely equivalent. You just have to add or subtract one from X to get from one to the other. You can tell which one a particular author is working with just by looking to see if x equals zero is included in the support. Let's do an example. A child decides to roll a six-sided die until they obtain a four. What's the probability that they need no more than eight rolls? Let's, um, so first of all, let's notice that this is a geometric random variable. We're talking about the number of attempts needed until the first success, and all the attempts are identical. Here the parameter um, P is 1 6, the probability of rolling a 4 is 1 in 6, and Q, 1 minus P, probability of failure, is 5 6. So the probability that X is 1 is just the probability of a success on the first roll, that's 1 in 6. The probability that X is 2 is the probability that you get a failure followed by a success, so Q times P, about 0.1389. And the probability that x is 3 is q squared times p, two failures followed by a success. All right, let's actually do this problem. There are at least two ways to do it. And the most direct is just to take the probability that it takes her uh, one roll, two rolls, three rolls, and so on, all the way up to eight rolls. Find them individually and add them all up. So sum from x equals 1 to 8, 5 sixths to the x minus 1 times 1 six. This is um, one that we can do by hand. It's a terminating geometric series. The initial term is A is 1 sixth, and the ratio is R, 5 sixths. There are N equals 8 total terms. And so the formula for the sum of this terminating geometric series, A times 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R, comes out to be this. It simplifies out to 0. 0.7674. Now, if you look at this for just a minute, you'll notice that that 6 in the denominator, the 1 6 out front, will cancel with the 1 6 in the denominator. So really, I'm just getting 1 minus 5 6 to the 8th here, to the 8th here. That's very simple, and it suggests that there's an easier way to do this problem. Um, so I'm going to su suggest that you pause the video here and try and think about why the answer 1 minus 5 6 to the 8th makes sense. Okay, the reason here is that we're looking at a complement. Needing no more than eight rolls is complementary to needing at least nine rolls. And we can compute the probability of needing at least nine rolls directly. That just means that you've had eight failures in a row to start. So the probability that you need at least nine rolls is five six to the eighth. The probability of needing no more than eight rolls is one minus that, one minus five six to the eighth. We can generalize this thinking to get the cumulative distribution function, or CDF, for any geometric distribution. It's 1 minus q to the x. This is again representing the probability that at most x trials are necessary to obtain the first success. So just by looking at this CDF, we can see that the probability that at least x trials are needed is q to the x. Let's do another example. Find the probability that the child needs between 4 and 10 die rolls, including 4 and 10, to obtain the first 4. So we could do that with a summation, like we saw a couple of slides ago, but now we have a quicker way to do this. 
using that CDF. The probability that x is between 4 and 10 is the probability that x is no more than 10 minus the probability that x is no more than 3. Plugging 10 and 3 into f of x, 1 minus q to the x, and canceling out the 1s, we get q to the 3rd minus q to the 10th. Plugging in q equals 5 sixths, we get about 41.72%. Um, let's close by talking about the expected value of a geometric random variable with parameter p. It turns out to be just 1 over p, which I think kind of makes sense if you, if you think about it just intuitively. If the probability of success on a given roll is 1 in 6, on average, you're going to need 6 rolls to get the first success. Let's show that mathematically. The proof is, is short and I think fairly elegant. Here's the formula for the expected value of the random variable. This is true generally. It's the sum of the possible outcomes times their probabilities. In this case, we get p plus 2qp plus 3q squared p, and so on. This is similar enough to a geometric series where we can use the same sort of technique we use to find the sum of a geometric series. Multiply the whole thing by q, which is kind of like a common ratio here, not exactly, but close enough, and then subtract the results. We're left with 1 minus q times mu equals p times qp times q squared p, and so on. And this right-hand side is a geometric series, and it's going to be a convergent one since the common ratio is less than 1. So, rewriting 1 minus q as p on the left, and using the formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series on the right, we get p times mu equals p, p over 1 minus q. Again, 1 minus q is equal to p, so the right-hand side is just 1. And now we can solve for that expected value by dividing both sides of this last equation by p. Overall, we get that the expected value of a geometric random variable is 1 over p.